Well, folks, the time has come. The moment we were all waiting for. After all of the teasing, anticipation, the threats, we at last have reached the pinnacle of Baywatch hubris, the most ill-conceived spin-off of all time. I am, of course, talking about the incomparable Baywatch Nights. Everyone remembers Baywatch Nights because of season two, when one of the most insane things ever happened on television. But before it became The X-Files, it was actually a fairly standard detective show. Nights has a very complicated history with many twists and turns. How this ever came from a show about lifeguards is an eternal mystery. But we can certainly be PIs ourselves and excavate for some clues. David Hasselhoff wanted to create a detective show and play a more suave, debonair kind of action character. So he conceived of the idea of a Lethal Weapon-type series starring himself and Gregory Allen Williams and convinced the other Baywatch folks to help him produce it. Now, this is just me throwing a guess out there, but I don't really think he wanted another Baywatch show. I think he wanted to break away from that image and keep himself from just being the Baywatch guy, and either A, was convinced by the other producers it needed to be Baywatch related, or B, used the Baywatch thing as a stealth way to make his self-insert detective show. This could be entirely untrue. But I do know for a fact from interviews that he didn't even want Baywatch in the name of the show. He wanted to name it Santa Monica Nights. It was only changed at the buyer's insistence. And Hasselhoff is a real salesman. I don't believe for a second he wouldn't think about the Baywatch brand as a selling point. He definitely didn't want people to think of this as Baywatch. Going into Baywatch Nights and using the word Baywatch, which I didn't want to use, was a mistake. And I told them in the beginning we shouldn't, we shouldn't try to have Baywatch and Baywatch Nights and Baywatch Mornings and Baywatch Afternoons. You could keep making Baywatch-related Baywatch shows. Baywatch Mornings. Baywatch Mornings. Baywatch Afternoon. Which is probably why things get super confusing super quick. People just didn't quite get the concept of Mitch being a detective as a second job. Even Hasselhoff was confused. And I thought, well, this is what Mitch does at night. He's a private detective at night. Right. However, we see you hanging around during the day. Right. And I don't think you're a lifeguard in this show. And I'm really confused. So what's going on exactly? Well, you know, I'm kind of confused too. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bad sign. <laughs> to me, a second job is not confusing. Yeah, Mitch as a PI is certainly a stretch, but it's not as if lifeguards don't get second jobs. What puzzled me is the constant advertising that Mitch is a lifeguard by day, PI by night, which is not even the premise. It's called Nights because it features a nightclub called Nights, and in fact almost entirely takes place during the day in season one. But they advertised it almost as if Mitch was some sort of lifeguard PI werewolf who transforms once the sun goes down. And you thought saving lives during the day was tough. Wait till you see the nights. You can't be a lifeguard during the day in a private eye at night. Why not? Baywatch Nights, quite simply, did not help itself. They overcomplicated things by confusing advertising and shifting air dates. The Baywatch episode that leads into this was a two-parter, and Baywatch Nights premiered in between parts, meaning Mitch goes to join a detective agency after he's already part of it. And on top of that, they didn't even air the pilot first. Yeah, they didn't think it would be important to actually let people know what the hell was going on. So they aired the pilot as episode 8 with a new wraparound segment and filmed an introductory to the camera exposition for the episode they actually aired first. That's kind of actually happened in the first episode, which never aired because it was so confusing <laughs> that even when I watched it, I, I had to go back and re-narrate the whole show and it was still confusing. There's a reason so many jokes about spin-offs include nights at the end. Hell, I named the revamp of my show Movie Nights. I mean, it's just... It's hilarious. And that was true back then, too. It was a joke from the start. No one was behind this show. And Baywatch itself used to find these kinds of things ridiculous as well. In season two, Mitch was cast in an action movie where he played a lifeguard slash PI, and the whole thing was played for comedy. It's entirely a hilarious foreshadow into their own future. 
<laughs> Who would ever make that? <laughs> they would. Knights had a huge mountain of mockery to overcome, and it just didn't have that kind of climbing power. Just listen to these glowing reviews. You thought the writing was bad on Baywatch. Now, Baywatch Knights, that was new lows. It was trying to take Baywatch even lower than it could ever go. I, I was beyond my wildest dreams. It was a mistake going in. Before Baywatch Nights was fully formed, however, they had to get the idea off the ground. Now that Hasselhoff's lethal weapon idea had been turned into this Baywatch mutant hybrid of sorts, they filmed what's called a pitch pilot, which is basically a short or incomplete version of a show used to entice potential investors. That was amazing. Thanks. She thinks that was amazing. That was nothing compared to last night. The Baywatch Nights pitch video is very weird, even for nights. It plays like a normal TV show, with the exception of Mitch, who randomly breaks the fourth wall to give us exposition every once in a while. It's jarring every time. I feel like I'm on Baywatch Nights The Ride, and Mitch is gonna ask us for help finding clues. We're treated to a music video featuring all the action we'll see, which is actually reused clips from Baywatch proper. Garner's clips are almost entirely of Sly Hutchinson, Garner's egotistical look-alike actor from the Baywatch TV show within a TV show, and one episode from season one. That's right, a character who was in a show conceived as a parody of what people thought action on the beach was like is what they're using to pitch their action spin-off. The irony is not lost on me. Lending further credence to my theory that Hasselhoff wanted to leave his swim trunks behind, even the lyrics of their proto-theme seem to question how long the Baywatch gravy train will keep going. You're riding so high, sailing the seas of success, but how long will it last, babe? That's just anybody's girl. Also, it looks like Garner is going to shoot himself at one point. That leaves us with 10 minutes to tell a short story that'll sell the show. It starts out with Mitch explaining his lethal weapon premise, with the emphasis on Garner, who has taken over a PI business in a club called Knights and convinced Mitch to become his partner. Knights is owned by Lou Rawls, who has this peculiar exchange with Mitch. Mitch, don't you get enough of this on the beach every day, man? Yeah, but Lou, the girls on the beach are practically naked. I mean, everyone here is wearing clothes. I find this much more exciting. Get it, audience? This show isn't trashy like Baywatch. The ladies have bikinis on during the daytime, and at nighttime they put on micro minis and that sort of thing, so there'll still be a lot of human anatomy. What a bizarre way to word that, Gregory, but thanks. Mitch tells us that Garner always wanted to be a detective, but for undisclosed reasons, the cops wouldn't let him do it. The cops wouldn't let him do it. So I guess we've discovered that both he and Garner share the same childhood dreams. When I was eight years old, I saw the ultimate movie, The Maltese Falcon. For the next six or seven years, I wanted to be private eye. But now both of them own a detective agency together. Thank you. Thank you. Quick, cut her off before she introduces me on stage and they figure out what episode the footage is reused from. Pretty soon, they meet Dana Hunter, partner of the guy who owned the agency previously, played by Lisa Stahl, who has stolen one of Summer's shirts. She has some sort of mystery artifact in her bag, which some dastardly criminals want to steal. This leads to an overnight chase scene that involves tiny trains and carousels. Where'd this gun come from? I don't know. All of which I'll get into more detail later, because it's almost entirely recycled in an actual episode. We spent all night trying to lose them in one of the most spectacular chases you can imagine. Which you'll have to do, since this is just a presentation. But what's in the bag? <laughs> You'll just have to find out, audience. Believe me, it's worth it. Spoilers, it wasn't worth it. Well, this was retooled quite a bit, but still essentially the same idea. In the final product, Garner and Mitch meet a PI from New York named Ryan McBride, played by Angie Harmon, and end up becoming three-way partners with her after some shenanigans. Angie Harmon has become really big now, but this was her first role. David Hasselhoff discovered her on a plane and begged her to be on his show. It's interesting that she took Lisa Stahl's place as essentially the same character, and I'm not quite sure what happened there. And I swear that's Harmon in the pitch pilot in the background, so I'm not really sure the sequence of events either. Stahl was kept on as a lead for half of season one, but changed to the character of Destiny Desimone, a hippy-dippy chick who appeared on two episodes of Baywatch and I guess was worth expanding upon. Also, she's psychic now. 
Gregory Allen Williams has become Gregolin Williams in the credits, and I am both delighted and perplexed. So here's the deep, dark truth. I watched all of Baywatch Nights before I watched Baywatch itself. Quite simply, I just thought it'd be funnier. And my conclusion, after watching everything, is that it both is and isn't. It's really an enigma. And that, again, is something we'll get into further down the line. But as for Season 1, Detective Baywatch Nights, here's the most baffling part. In all honesty, it's not that bad of an action show. It's got heart and humor, the actors are all pros, this was Angie Harmon's debut role, and you'd never know, she's great. Baywatch Nights biggest flaw is Baywatch. If you didn't know anything about the parent show, or it didn't exist, Night Season 1 would hold up just fine. And if you can get over the fact that this character is Mitch Buchanan, you can have a lot of fun with it. Or maybe even more so if you just embrace it. Point is, I think people were a little unfair to the show at this stage. Which isn't to say it was without flaws, because yes, there is still a lot to make fun of. And with all of that said and done, I hope you'll enjoy following me down this rabbit hole too. I plan to review these alongside Baywatch itself according to air date, which is already a little wonky because of the two-parter it aired between, but generally speaking, it's gonna go in the order people saw them. And believe me, nights will never be the same. Next time on Baywatch Nights, Mitch and company are hired to protect a model from a madman. Will romance blossom? Sexy times!